Hi, and welcome to the Pesticide Vendor Certification Course. My name is Steve Speller. Today we're going to be reviewing uh, pesticide resistance. So what is pesticide resistance? Pesticide resistance is genetic diversity and selection. So genetic diversity, some individual plants within a species are naturally resistant to a pesticide. When these resistant pests reproduce, the next generation of pests, like their parents, will not be controlled by that family of pesticides. Selection is resistance may develop if you use the same pesticide season after season, um, or if you don't use a different pesticide. In these slides, you'll see at the bottom left, uh, year one, this is uh, glyphosate tolerant Canada fleabane and you'll see a few plants scattered throughout the field. However, the following year, with the rate of seed production um, and using the same chemistry, we have a total disaster. The field is completely taken over by the triazine resistant um, Canada fleabane. So these are the types of problems that we can run into. We have to consider the mode of action of the pesticide that we're using. And the mode of action is the way the pesticide works to control that pest. In this diagram, you'll see that rectangular symbol where it says group one herbicide. That's what you'll see on the principal display panel of a pesticide label. We can also find out through various OMAFRA publications, such as the Field Guide to Chemical Weed Control, um, the Hort Crops Weed Control Book, the Vegetable Crop Protection Guide, and the Fruit Crop Protection Guide. So there's lots of ways to find out what um, mode of action we have available for us to work with to control various pests. In Canada, we have a lot of resistance. You can see the list of herbicide resistant groups there. It's a large number. Insecticide, miticide resistance, as well as fungicide resistant uh, chemical groups. On the chart on the right, we can see a historic uh, graph of resistant weed cases in Canada. So going back to uh, 1975, there was only a couple of resistant weeds in the whole country. And over time, you can see that graph is kind of climbing up on a 45 degree angle. And as of 2016, we're almost 70 uh, resistant weeds that we have in Canada. And that graph is going to continue upward. If you want to uh, learn more about that, look and see what the Southern United States is dealing with in numbers. They're well over double that number of resistant weeds uh, in the southern states. Here's a, a quick map of uh, resistant Canada fleabane in uh, southern Ontario. The yellow shows fleabane that is resistant to both glyphosate uh, tolerance, group 9s, and group 2, so such products as First Raid and Pursuit. The counties in red are strictly glyphosate resistant uh, Canada fleabane. So you can see as we go further east, there's there, the weeds are spreading and so are the uh, double tolerances. In the case of uh, herbicide resistant lambs quarters, a uh, similar looking map in the southwest, we have uh, uh, the both uh, group two and group five resistant. So the uh, group twos, pursuit, pinnacle, that type of chemistry, group five is the triazine family. Uh, and in the, uh, as you go east, you'll see that there tends to be just the group five triazine resistant uh, lambs quarters. However, those maps continue to spread east and show how the weeds do travel. Redroot pigweed has a large number of resistance and, and it's all over the, all over the map as you can see. So um, we have group twos in the straight yellow. We have triazine resistant uh, red root pigweed. We have group pigweed that is both group two and five. We have pigweed that's both group two and sixes. We have some that are both twos and sevens. We have some that are two fives and sevens. Um, and we have some that are uh, resistant to four groups, two, five, six, and seven. So to control red root pigweed in those cases, you really have to do some homework and make sure that you're not using some of that chemistry that's going to uh, do nothing at all to that red root pigweed. When it comes to common ragweed, 
uh, we see similar looking map. In the southwest, we have uh, primarily group two resistance. Um, we have uh, Haldeman, Brandt, Norfolk area. We have trizine resistant group fives. In Niagara Peninsula, we have group twos and fives. And we also, although the picture hides it, uh, group twos and nines down in uh, Essex County. So again, we're seeing multiple resistance with some weeds. One of the new resistant weeds that we're seeing in southern Ontario is water hemp. And it's like a pig pigweed on steroids. It can grow up to one inch per day, emerges all season long, produces up to 4.8 million seeds per plant, and herbicide resistant now in seven counties. So let's have a look at how that spread. Initially, it was discovered in Lambton County and, and in Walpool Island in 2014. Uh, next, we found it in Essex, Chatham, Kent uh, the following year. A year after that, it moved into Middlesex County. Uh, then it was discovered in Huron County and Haldeman and Wentworth. So again, you can see it progressing easterly across the province. Uh, then it's up into Bruce County. Uh, Northumberland, it just continues to move. So let's talk about it. Do you have a resistant pest? We need to rule out uh, some problems that may have occurred, such as application errors. Uh, perhaps you didn't use the right rate of the pesticide. Equipment failure, so you could have had uh, not be putting out enough product out of your sprayer, wasn't properly calibrated, or had a, a pump starting to fail. Could be environmental conditions. You know, if you got a rain uh, before the rain fast period, you could have had that pesticide washed off those weeds and it didn't uh, have a chance to get into the plant and control it. Or it could simply be pest identification errors. Many of these weeds at the small, you know, two, three leaf stage look very similar and are hard to identify in some cases. So we need to check our records. Uh, did the pesticide do a good job of controlling the other pests listed on the label? So if you only have one species of weed that escaped, but all the other broadleafs are killed, perhaps it might be resistant. Uh, did a pesticide from the same group fail to control these uh, pests last year? And you use the pesticide from the same group frequently in this field year after year. So you're setting yourself up to have resistance in those cases. How do we manage it? We need to use integrated pest management. And if we're using herbicides, we need to make sure that we rotate and use different groups of the chemical family to make things work. A great exercise to do with your uh, customers is to have them sit down, write down the crops that they're growing. Beside that, write down what pesticides they're using, uh, as you can see in the chart, and then look using the publications or using labels write down which group numbers that they're using so you can see in this uh, example there's various different products although they're still using some group fives in both crops and group 15s so we have to be careful um, that we're using as many chemical families as possible to delay resistance and to control resistant weeds Again, we can look through many of the publications to get that information. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's really important to do your homework ahead of time. For more information on this, uh, go to the Ontario Pesticide Education Program YouTube channel. There is an excellent um, video on resistant management school uh, where P Dr. Peter Sikama discusses pesticide resistance.